everyone, I am Carolise. Welcome to my channel. Today we're talking about another important topic and that's going to be about you and your job. So today we're talking about how you can make the most of your job. So this is going to be helpful for those who already have a job, obviously, but also those who are looking for a job and trying to strategize what they're going to do with their careers and so on. So if you already have a job as a business analyst or any other corporate job, this video will be helpful for you. So how to make the most of your current job. Now, before I get into that, I want to say that you have to have a plan in life, right? You have to have a strategy. You have to know what you're trying to accomplish. Otherwise, what do you know what you're working towards and how do you know if you're on the right track? Like you have to have a plan. And part of that plan could be have a job in this field and then get to this level and then do that. Maybe you want to branch off into having your own business, your own consultation company. You know, you want to do something else with your life. It's okay. You don't have to stay married to one career for the rest of your life. You can definitely sit around and you can jump around and move around, but you have to have a strategy. You have to know where you're trying to go. Otherwise you can be just jumping around and jumping around and you find that you've done enough, a lot of things, but they all are in different directions and you just find yourself spread out very thin. So I would encourage you to make that plan, make that strategy. Where do you want to be next year? Where do you want to be the next five years? What's your long-term goal? What are you trying to accomplish? Are you going to let life happen to you and things happen to you? Are you going to be in a position that you can move depending on what happens at your job? Are you preparing for the worst? Are you prepping yourself to move to the next level? Like what is your next level, right? So everybody has to have that, that thinking when they are employed because you know, you are reporting to somebody above you, so they have the choice as to whether or not you can stay at the company or not. So you have to plan like that. The job has to be a win-win situation. It has to be. You're going to give off your time, your thoughts, your professionalism. You're going to give everything that you have to this job in exchange for certain benefits whether those are health benefits, in addition to your salary, of course, I'm not talking about just a salary, but there's other benefits that people get from just employed, being employed that, you know, it's beneficial to them. So the company gains from you because they get the skill that you provide and then you gain from the company because of the salary they provide you, the benefits they provide you, the people that you connect with and things like that. So those are the obvious win-wins, but there has to be more. There has to be more for you and there has to be more that you can give to the company. So you're not just getting by being employed, you're also giving. You have to give. If you don't give, you're not going to get, right? It's a universal law. It's the law of the universe. I tell you, sometimes when I'm doing these videos, people say, why do you give all this free information? I mean, people pay for this. You can go to a course and pay how many thousands of dollars and get it. And by the way, I'm coming up with my own course, so you'll have a chance to do that too, right? If you want to get additional information. But the truth is that I have to find ways to help people in my community. I do. I feel it's, a, it's, it's incumbent on all of us who have knowledge in a certain area to be able to provide that knowledge for free to people. Like you have to help people. Now, it doesn't mean you don't monetize. It doesn't mean that you don't find ways to make it a business if you want to. Of course, you can do that. But giving back is so much more valuable than trying to just suck money out of people for every little thing. I really don't think that, I think the knowledge is so, there's so much knowledge that even if I give you some of it, I can charge for some of it later on. I mean, there's no limit to knowledge. You can just keep knowing and keep knowing, keep knowing. And as you grow and you learn more, why can't you help people who are coming up? Why can't you help them to get to where you are? Why does it have to be always a business? You have to make money out of it or you don't do it. I don't think that's, I don't think that's the way to do things. And I believe that there's so much blessing that you get when you give honestly and you help people and you can, there is satisfaction in addition to other benefits. Like I get so much blessings. I call it blessings from God just for the small thing I'm doing here on my YouTube channel. And there are other things that I do that are not publicized on YouTube, but there is so much blessing that you get. It's almost unfortunate. 
it's almost unfortunate that people are not doing this. Like everybody should be doing this. Everybody should be sharing their knowledge. If you can cook, if you are a good carpenter, if you are electrician, if like whatever you're good at, share it. Let people know and let them see. It could be something that you think is obvious because that's your genius zone. You're in your genius zone. For, so for to you, duh, it's perfectly obvious. Why can't anybody else do this? But they can't because they don't have your genius zone. So people should be sharing the thing that they're good at, the thing that makes them them, the thing that they can really talk about without even reviewing anything. They don't have to have anything written down. They just know it because it's a part of what they do every day. So I, I'm going to get off my, um, my soapbox right now. But sharing your knowledge, helping others, is one of the things that you really shouldn't discount and you have to give. So when you're at your job, they pay you to do this and you have the job description that says do this, do this, do this, do this. But if you have skills that can help the company that is outside of your direct job description, then do it. If you have the opportunity to do it, then do it. Give. Give. And I'm telling you, you get it back thousandfold. It's the law of the universe. It's the law of God. Okay? So that's just my little, you know, my little um, discussion about that. Now, let's go back to the topic of the video, which is how to make the most of your job. So it needs to be win-win, right? It has to be win-win. So you're giving to them, get, you're getting from them. Outside of your salary and your compensation package or your benefits or your, you know, your bonuses or whatever, outside of all of that, you need a strategy for your work, okay? So how to make the most of your, your job. The first thing is, is you need to be continuously improving yourself. Whatever role you are in right now, is that the role you want to be in in five years? How are you going to get there? So companies actually want to improve the training and the skills of their employees. Because if you're employed to the company, you get better skills, you can apply those skills to their business problem and you can make them better as opposed to them going to find someone and training them. You already have the knowledge because you're working there. If they can just help you with the few areas that you need help with, then they'll do it. Companies actually want to improve the skills in their employees. So you just need to present them with a way to do that. So organizations that can help you build your skills, if you're a business analyst, then the IIBA obviously comes to mind. You could join the IIBA on your own, or you could ask your company to pay for your membership, right? And the membership to your local chapter. So if you present this to your management team and you say, okay, I really want to improve my, my, my skills as a business analyst. That's the job I have here. Here's this organization that has webinars and events and they have activities that's going to help me to hone my skills and to do better in this job. Can the company pay for that uh, membership so that I can be a part of that group or that, that, that the organizational body? Most people will not, most managers will not deny you, but you have to present it that you're interested in improving yourself. That's the one thing that you can get the most out of your job. They can pay for your membership. Same if you're into pro, you know, project management, they can pay for your PMI membership. There's a lot, number of other webinars that happen. There are learning activities, seminars, and things like that. If you seek those things out, and then you can present the, the case for why you should be a part of it to your management team, more than likely they'll approve it and they'll pay for you to be able to do these, um, these training courses. Now, you just have to make sure you're not being exorbitant, right? Don't try to profit off your company. You don't want to say, okay, there's this $10,000 course that I want to do. I mean, you're probably not going to get approved or maybe it depends on the, the, the level you're at or the, the, the appetite for learning that your company has. Maybe they'll approve it. I don't know. But don't try to like suck everything out of your company just like that because you don't want to pay for it on your own. If it's something that you're really going to benefit from, yes, they'll help you, but it has to be aligned to your job and don't be seen as being a person that's trying to, you know, get the company to pay for all kinds of stuff and then after a while you're gone. You know what I mean? Like don't, don't leave that bad reputation for yourself. So ask them if they will pay for these organizations that are at a reasonable price and for the training that you're wanting to do and present the case why you want to do that, how it's going to improve you to help them do better at whatever the business is.
The other thing to make the most out of your job is to build work samples. Yes. That means that as you're working as a business analyst and you create these use cases and you create these um, requirements documented, you have all this list of um, user stories and acceptance criteria and you have all the mockups that you've done and you have all the details behind these projects. Keep a copy of some of those as your work sample because as you move to another job, you might need to prove that you've been able to do this in the past. And that example that you've been working on can be then presented and you can walk through your new employers or in an interview or whatever you're doing to say, this is how I worked in the past. Okay. Sometimes when you switch jobs, you find that the new job you're going to doesn't have a process as robust as where you're coming from. And you could provide immediate value by saying to them, Hey, this is what I used to do at my last company. Here's an example of how we did, you know, a requirements document. Here's an example of how we did our walkthroughs. Here's an example of a presentation that we did. Here's some templates that we used to have, and you could help them get up the speed and get back to where you probably were in your last job because they don't have that that knowledge so you can just add value because you have the experience right so keep a cap a copy of the things that you've worked on no you got to be careful with this because some jobs have nda agreements where you can't you know disclose certain information so maybe you could anonymize it take out the names take out the pertinent information but keep this the, the, the scaffolding keep the the essence of it right so that you can use that in your next job so this is how you make the most of where you actually are, make the most of your current job for the next job that you're gonna get. The other thing you need to do to make the most of your current job is to start recording your accomplishments. And this is something I need to start doing too. Like some of this advice I'm taking for myself because I don't do this. Like you get so many things done and you don't actually record it. So it's it's like it, it you forget, <laughs> you literally forget. So when clients, give you compliments and say how you've helped them, you know, improve their process and they give you the metrics about how they reduce the wait time and all that stuff. Store that somewhere, keep a folder somewhere where you can put that email into that folder. Or when you get, um, you've done something that helps the company make more profit, you can keep that. If you've had a process that's been improving and people are more work, working better, streamlined and communication is flowing better and the team congratulates you, keep a log of that. When you get recognized by your managers or by your team for something that you've done and you get an award or you get some kind of promotion, they give you some kind of gift package or whatever, keep a copy of those emails, right? Keep a log of what you've done and what you've accomplished because you'll forget. I certainly do. And sometimes you need to say those things when you're, you know, selling yourself for another job and you need to have those as um, proof of what you've done in the past. Now, once you have kept a log of your accomplishments, learn how to communicate those accomplishments. Sometimes you're waiting for somebody else to blow your trumpet and to recognize you. Sometimes you have to recognize yourself. Okay. Sometimes you got to do it yourself and you need to have these accomplishments so that you can use them when you talk about the things that you've done. So I'll give an example of this. It's not that you're going to go on a bragging fest and start telling everybody how you're the greatest and what you've done. No, but as you're talking about things, you're in a meeting, you can say, well, we improved the process from last year to reduce it by 10% wait time. And you know, you can just pump it in where it's appropriate and you're inadvertently promoting the work that you've done without coming off as being, you know, showy and bragging and all that stuff. But you need to keep a log of it. You need to know how to communicate it. So it's remembered because nobody's going to remember the accomplishments that you have. You have to remember them and you have to be able to communicate them. If you're having like one-on-one -on -one sessions with your boss and they're doing review sessions, like employee review, you need to have these accomplishments so you can say what you've done and be able to call, call them out, right? So at the end of the year, when they need to review you to give you a bonus or whatever, you want to be able to show these things. That's kind of some of the ways that you can make the most of your job. The other thing that you can do to make the most of your job is to, you know, build your list of contacts and references. So as you're at the job and you're meeting new people, you're having your stakeholder interview sessions, there's nothing wrong with just getting the LinkedIn of the people that you're talking to and start building your LinkedIn profile, you know, make sure that you get a contact for this person. You never know back in the future, maybe these people have, 
you know, been impressed with the work that you've done and there's a new opportunity, they can call you for it or something like that. Or you're, you're starting your own business and you want to, you know, meet up with the contacts that you knew from your old job. You never know. But it's always good to keep your contact list growing as you're doing more stuff at your job. The other thing that could help you make the most of your current job is references and recommendations. So you're at the job, you work with someone, they're leaving, you have a goodbye session for them, or you send them off. Before they go, ask them to give you a recommendation, especially if this person is above you, if they're a management level. Let them go, ask them to go to your LinkedIn and leave a recommendation for you so you can start compiling this list of recommendations that you can use so when you're going to another job, you always have that for, you know, for the new employers to look at. The other way to make the most of your current job is to become an expert. Now, if you're a business analyst, this is not too hard, right? Because you're the one designing the process. You're the one coming up with the mock-up. You're the one implementing the change, you know, working through the change and being there throughout it. So you have a great opportunity to become an expert. So if you want to be an expert in this industry or you want to be an expert in just this process or an expert in this feature or this thing works, it doesn't matter. Make sure that you pick something and try to know the most about it, right? Be the expert, be the person they come to for information. Know it so well that you are the source, you are the SME, you, you know everything about it, be the expert. And that's gonna be helpful, especially if you pick expertise in a certain uh, industry or tool that's applicable outside of your current job. For example, if you're working with Salesforce, be the expert in Salesforce for your company, like know all about it, try to figure out how it works for the company and take on these, these challenging projects if you can, that would help you to be exposed more to different parts of Salesforce, for example. Or if you are in, I don't know, supply chain industry, um, try to know the most about the supply chain industry outside of just what you're doing in your job. Like, no, 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 all the details that you can. Be the expert in this one singular thing that way you can be the go-to person. And so one, you become more valuable at your current job. And also if you have to switch to another job, you know that much about that industry that they're paying you for that knowledge as well. But you gain that knowledge from your last job because you made the most of it, okay? So there you have it. Those are some things I think will help you to make the most of your current job. I hope this video was useful. If you like the video, then please like the video because I have no other way of knowing guys that you like the video. So like the video, comment on the video, subscribe, right? And uh, watch the next video. And I will see you guys in the next video. Take care. This is Kyra Lise.